Just like Frodo in Lord of the Rings, the sensory information has a long way to travel from the peripheral regions to Mordor. I mean, the somatosensory cortex. And although there may not be any angry spiders, overly possessive ring bearers, or evil wizards trying to stop it along the way, each sensory signal has many stops, twists and turns that are necessary to make it get to where it needs to be. Just like how Frodo travelled to deliver a piece of mysterious ring to a flaming mountain far away from home. Let's start off on our own sensory adventure now as we explore the posterior column medial lemniscus pathway. We'll get to know why this ascending sensory tract has such a complicated name in a few minutes, but first let's see exactly what topics we'll tackle today. We'll first look at the function of the pathway by reviewing what types of sensory information it carries to the cortex. We'll then look at its position in the cross-section of the spinal cord. We'll take a close look at how the first, second and third order neurons travel in the PCML pathway, and along the way we'll look at the arrangement of fibres which carry the sensory information and where in the somatosensory cortex the information is received. Finally, we'll take some look at some clinical notes. The posterior or dorsal column medial lemniscus, often called the PCML or DCML for short, is an ascending pathway in the brain and spinal cord that carries sensory information from receptors in the periphery of the body to the brain for processing. But what sort of sensory information? The PCML is a bit of a multitasker as it carries information from a few different sensations. Firstly, it is associated with fine touch, like when a little spider crawls up your arm. It also carries information about vibration or oscillation. It's also involved in the pathway of discriminative touch. So what does that encompass exactly? It includes tactile localization or knowing exactly where you're being touched. It's also concerned with two-point discrimination, which allows you to know that you're being touched in more than one spot simultaneously. It includes recognising the shape of the object you're holding, known as stereognosis. Finally, it carries information about conscious proprioception, which allows you to purposely recognise the position and movement in different parts of your body. For example, if you are dancing, you need to know where your limbs are at any given time. This is different from unconscious proprioception, however we'll speak more about this later on in the tutorial. So we now understand the functions of this pathway, but its name may still seem daunting. Let's take a look at why it's named the way it is. So where did the name posterior column medial lemniscus pathway come from? Well. There are a number of pathways that information from the outside world can travel to the brain, and often they're named according to the structures that they pass through. And that's what we've done here. We're now looking at an illustration of a transverse section of the spinal cord with grey matter in the middle and white matter around the periphery. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.